Well, I decided to turn myself a new ink pen for work. Um, what I have is a, a cigar pin kit from Woodcraft, uh, and I got this blank. It's called uh, Huckleberry. It's a, an acrylic blank. I got it from. Uh, let me hold up a little closer there. I got it from Craft Supplies, uh, the Woodturners catalog. I thought it was kind of an interesting. Uh, looking blank to turn a, a cigar style pin from. The pin kit I got is not the a titanium or, or chrome, it's a uh, it's a black satin kit so I think it'll look nice with that um, with that blank. So I thought I need a new pin but I wanted one so I thought well, what the heck I'll turn myself a new one. Alright I have my two tubes for my cigar pin. Uh, what I did was I just put a put them on the blank, marked it out and then I cut the blank and cut the blank in half um, to size actually. Uh, I like to put a, uh, you probably can't see it, but I like to put a cabinet maker's triangle on, uh, on each of the blanks. Not so much probably for these acrylic blanks, but when you get to a wood blank, uh, when there's two pieces, I like to keep the grain orientation. So that way I know that the, the grain, uh, this was how the two pieces would go together. So the next thing to do is to take these over to the drill press and drill uh, uh, holes through the, through the center of the blanks. Uh, this particular kit takes a 10 millimeter drill bit, so we'll put one of those in the drill in the drill press, and we'll uh, drill a hole. I have my pin vise clamped to the table on my drill press. Uh, I have a 10 millimeter bit in the in the uh, chuck, and I put some uh, tape on here so that it, what I don't want to do this acrylic blank is drill all the way through. I don't know if you can see there, but the uh, the bit is just a little short of the uh, coming out at the end. Uh, um, what I'm going to do on this one is uh, just drill it till I get to the tape, uh, and then we'll take to the bandsaw and cut this bottom part off and expose the, the hole that we drill. We'll go ahead and turn the drill press on and drill this hole. It's important to uh, it's important to, to evacuate the uh, the chips as you do it because it's uh, being a plastic, it basically gums up in there if it gets too hot, so you want to back the, back the bit out as you drill it. Every now and then you got to stop and take off the remnants that kind of stick on it. Alright, that's all we need to do with that one, so we should have on the bottom, we should have. Uh, well, it didn't actually come out, but it's long enough for the it's long enough for the tube to be glued in after we trim the bottom of the blank off. So that's really all there is to that. I'm going to go ahead and drill the uh, other one. All right, we're going to glue our uh, tubes into the end of our pin blanks here. Um, what I'm using is just some tight bond uh, CA glue. This happens to be thick. Uh, that's what I like to use when I glue these in to the blank. Um, I got a little pin insertion tool that helps me here. Keeps uh, some of the glue off my hands. Uh, nothing worse than gluing your gluing yourself to the pin blank. Uh, don't ask me how I know that. Uh, we'll stick a little glue in the opening of the blank here as well. And then we just take and insert that in here. There we go. All right, and then we just wipe off any extra, any extra CA glue. All right, I flushed up the ends of our pin blank with uh, this 10 millimeter barrel trimmer. It just I use it in a drill, and it just goes in there and trims that up and and uh, squares everything up. So when we put it on the lathe, everything's nice and square. I still have my uh, cabinet maker's triangle on there. It's like it's right there, like that. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and put a couple of marks on the inside of the uh, on the inside of the tube so that we know which parts go together when we're uh, after we get it all turned and everything. What has to happen is the shortest blank, which is the top, goes up on this end. The shortest blank goes up here on this end like that and then the, the largest bushing goes on next and that goes in there and then the next one goes on like that and then the last one the small one goes on 
that end. There. All right, we have our uh, bushings on there, so I'll bring the uh, tail stock up. So we can press those tight. That's nice and tight, so let's get the tool rest and then we can start turning this. All right, for turning these acrylics, I like to use a skew. Um, this one, I just sharpened it up so it's nice and nice and sharp. We'll use it to take off the edges and then use it in kind of a scraping motion to get the, uh, the blank turned down to proper size of the bushing. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's make sure we're not hitting anything and away we go. I got the speed up about 1500 RPM or so. Until we got the corners knocked off when we start to get long streamers coming off there. Switch to using this scraper as a, uh, or the skew as kind of a scraper, and we'll see if we can't scrape some of this off. Get a little bit of vibration. Alright, well I'm going to start sanding this with regular, um, just regular sandpaper. I'm going to start with 120 grit, which might seem a little, uh, a little coarse for this, but we have a fair amount of, to, of uh, material to remove to get close to the bushings, and 
if we start with something like a 220 or whatever, we'll be here all day. So we're going to uh, start with 120 and then we're going to work our way up through 180, 220, 320 and finish it up with 400. And then once we get down to that, um, finish up with that grit, we should have everything down pretty close to the bushings. And then we're going to go to the micro mesh and start with the 1500 uh, and work our way up to 12,000. So we'll show a little bit of the sand in here, but uh, whether you're sanding a, a bowl or an ink pen, uh, it gets old real quick. So <laughs> let's uh, start to lay that. Uh, it's too fast for sanding. We're going to turn it down to 500 or so. And this stuff stands pretty well, although it it's going to look like it's uh, it's going to look pretty bad. So, but it cleans up real nice after uh, we get to the micro mesh. So we're going to start with 1500, um, and that'll we'll use that to finish getting the uh, getting the uh, blanks down to the uh, bushings, and then we'll just kind of progress through the grits as we go along here. So I've got a, I got some water over here, so we're going to. Get this one wet and just see what we can do with them. Here. Pretty much this 1500 grit pretty much takes out all the scratches from the previous uh, sandpaper we were using. So it pretty much uh, takes care of all that. So. We're finishing this up with this 12,000 grit, which is really uh, almost smooth. It's really you really can't feel any grit on it at all. It's just kind of a, doing a final polishing on it here. Yeah, wipe the wipe that off and see how we're doing here. Oops. All right. Oh yeah, that came out. Uh, the camera's probably not picking it up, but that. Uh, that really came out nice. It's nice and uh, nice and polished. The blues are blue, and it's got a nice black and got some gold in it. Uh, it's a really nice looking blank. All right, we're going to go ahead and assemble our uh, pin here. I have these nylon or some sort of material bushings in my in my lathe, and that's what I use to press the press the parts together. Uh, you can see this. Hopefully, you can see the uh, the blank. It really came out uh, really came out nice. So. Uh, these kits have a lot of parts, so we're going to kind of refer to the instructions as we do it. And the first thing we want to do is press the nib assembly into the into the bottom here. So we're going to tighten the tailstock down and crank it out and press that in there. This is kind of conical shaped on the inside, so those things fit in there pretty pretty nice. Well, we can get it to go together and there we go all right we got that part in there and we want to press this twist holder it's called into the up uh, into the opposite end so we can slide that on there let's put that on there and we'll put that on There we go. Get everything nice and tight. All right, that completed the, uh, the next thing to do on the on the bottom part is to put the, the pin blank in and put this twist assembly on it. Oop, not that one. This one. That's basically the transmission for the pin. It's going to open and. All right, there's that. Bottom part's ready to go. Now we're going to take the top piece and we want the center band, which is this one, and we will press that into the largest piece of the. Let's put that on there. 
Not sure we can get all the way over there. There we go. And we want to press the bushing that will put that in there. Put it into push it in until it's flush. Actually, I'm gonna put the cap on there. I found from past experience it's easier to if you put the cap on the on the top, it flushes that up when it uh, and I'll take that little pin out of there and we'll push that on there. We just take the cap off, put on the clip assembly, and then we screw this part on. And the only thing to do now is uh, press them together. And there we go. That really makes a a nice looking pin so I'm very happy with the way that came out uh, for our wood pin I'm going to turn this piece of mesquite into a, a Wall Street 3 kit um, I've got it drilled and the ends fleshed up with a barrel trimmer so we're we're good to go uh, I got the bushings for the Wall Street 3 that go in there uh, I got a couple of spacers here which are just old uh, slimline pin um, bushings. Uh, the Wall Street 3 <clears throat> and the Wall Street 2 are just single piece kits. Um, they're fairly easy to make and they're quick to turn and there's actually not a lot of not a lot of turning in these things once you get them down to the bushes. I mean that's that's pretty much it. So uh, I just use a roughing gouge to do that. Um, I get them close and I sand them down to the to the dimension that we need them. So all right, let's go ahead and uh, see, if, see if we can rush the, rough, rough this down. Uh, let's see, we'll turn it about 1,500 RPM or so. I say I just use a spindle roughing gouge for this. Once you get the corners, oops, once you get the corners knocked off, it's just a matter of turning it down to the bushing. Nah, give a little more pressure on the tailstock. sand it to, through the grits. I only sand up to about 400 uh, and then we'll put a CA finish on this. So usually I start with turn the speed down about 500 RPM or so. Generally I start with 120 just to shape it up and get it down to the close to the size of the bushes. So. itself. The finish I like to put on my wood pins is a CA glue boiled linseed oil uh, finish. 
Uh, I like to put some linseed oil on first to give the, give the wood a little bit of color because once I seal it with the, the CA glue, I'm not quite sure that it, uh, I can get a color on it that I like. Whoa, I don't want that much, so we won't use that. Uh, we won't use that paper down. Um, that comes out of the fast of that little container that I have it in there. All right, let's try this again. We only want to, for a pin this size, we only need just a little bit of CA glue. So I go ahead and do it, turning it the same speed we were doing our sanding, which is about 500 RPM. You put that, put that on there like that. And I come back. I'm just using Type Bond uh, medium CA glue. It's what I happen to have. There's others, and they all work fine. I put the glue back right on the same spot where I had the boiled linseed. Three or four drops will do on a pin plank this size, and then the idea is just to just to rub it. You can kind of tell when it starts to cure. It get one, it smells uh, very obnoxious smell, and two, the it the feel of rubbing it actually changes a little bit. It gets a little easier to do, and at that point, it's pretty much uh, pretty much on its way to drying. I like to. Uh, Turn the speed up, wipe off any excess oil, linseed oil. Turn it back down and then go to it again. I'll use the other end of this same paper towel. After I put the first boiled linseed oil on, I just generally, I don't know, save myself a little time. I just put the CA glue and the linseed oil on at the same time. Feels very uh, nice and smooth, but we'll go ahead and touch it up with a little bit of 600 grit sandpaper, just in case there's any ridges or anything in it. We don't need to sand much, just a little bit. Wipe that off, and then we'll do it again. It's not a shiny, shiny pin, but boy, it sure, it sure is smooth and it sure feels nice. And when you when you have it in your hand, it's really a nice to write with. So let me take this off the lathe and then we'll get our pin kit and we'll put this thing together. All right, well, we got the kit. Um, there is a slight difference in the size of those bushings. So generally what I do is uh, put the, just put that on there. That side is too big. I mean, it's just slightly too big, but... And they are a little bit different size, and that that size is a is a perfect fit for the uh, that end of the pin. So I know that this end is the top. So really, all I have to do is uh, put that on there, and we need to put the put the top on, and move our tailstock out of the way without knocking the camera over. There we go. All right, and then we just press that on to. And you can, if you have a spot that you're not real happy with, sometimes you can cover it up with the clip. Um, you just kind of move the clip around. But in this particular case, I don't really have any uh, any spots that I'm not happy with. So we're just going to go ahead and press that in there like that. And that's pretty much it for that. On the bottom piece, the, uh, the uh, pin the ink pin part goes in there like that this gets screwed onto the bottom piece and that's how that works and then after that all you do is line it up where you want it and push it together so that's a pretty easy pin kit to put together so in it in a, comes out pretty nice they make a great gift people people really like to receive them well, here's the two pins we made during this video. On the left is my uh, acrylic with the, my Huckleberry blank from Craft Supplies. On the right is a Wall Street 3 kit with a mis mesquite with a CA finish. Um, both of them came out really nice. Um, the camera doesn't do this one on this side justice. It, it's actually a very, uh, it's a beautiful pin and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be very happy uh, uh, using that. Uh, using that in my 
daily activities. This one on this side is a, is a nice looking pen as well. Like I said, the CA finish I use doesn't have a high gloss to it, but it certainly feels nice. So those are two pens that made during this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Uh, I certainly enjoyed making them. I have about so oh, nine more to go before, hopefully before the day is over, I'll have them all done. Uh, again, thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe.